The sun is free. It's there for us and it's abundant. So why not harness that power and make sure that everyone has access to it. With number one, you know, we can reduce our carbon footprint dramatically. And number two, we can actually create jobs. It's about economic growth, especially for those at the lowest economic strata, those communities and neighborhoods that have the highest unemployment. It's about leaving more money in working families' uh, pockets. One of the people I most admire is my dad because um, he went through so much trouble just to get us here. My family is actually from Jalisco, Mexico, in a little town close to Guadalajara. And my parents would always tell us, you know, to go to school, get an education, you know, so you won't have to struggle like us. My mom would get uh, stressed off the electricity bill just because it was always high. Uh, she always tell us, you know, don't use as much light, try to turn everything off. Solar energy has really had an effect on us, uh, especially during the summers, because uh, here in Sonoma County, it does get kind of hot. I would talk about over 100 almost every day. I was asking my dad how he felt about the solar panels. And then he was telling me that every time he saw the bill, he just doesn't cause him a heart attack anymore. So it's just because the bill's way, way lower. He says he loves it, especially since he lives off the sun. You know, grapes grow off the sun. The crops he makes us grows off the sun. And he said, now we can finally use electricity off the sun. So the sun is pretty much everything for us. Ten years ago, when it comes to solar, uh, we had roughly about 500 uh, megawatts statewide. Uh, today, you know, we're about 10,000 uh, megawatts of solar energy. And what I want to make sure is by democratizing our climate change policies that we have a minimum baseline of investments in communities that are disproportionately impacted by both GHG, greenhouse gas, carbon, CO2, as well as other co-pollutants that our children breathe into their lungs every single day. I had an opportunity to go out into the Sacramento community where we did an installation with Grid Alternatives. I actually saw physically the direct correlation of my bill, Senate Bill 535, and actually seeing the benefits happening in front of me in real time. If we move policies to generate clean energy and we make sure that we democratize our policies, then we have a real opportunity to be successful in making sure that we save this planet for today's generation and many generations to come. If you're traveling west from Denver on Interstate 70, Grand Junction is basically where the Rocky Mountains end and the Great American Desert begins. It can be more difficult, more expensive to serve folks who live in the mountains or at the end of a canyon or uh, out in the middle of the desert. The vast majority of our members are really impacted by cost pressures and their primary emphasis is very often how do we keep our product, our service, the electricity that we provide, how do we keep it as affordable as possible. Back in May of 2015, we constructed and put into service the nation's first community solar project that is dedicated to serving low-income consumers so that renters, so that other low-income folks can have access to clean, renewable solar energy. I didn't think that I would need assistance with solar or anything else. Well, I had a divorce and everything changed. Being a part of this program gives me a peace of mind. Um, I know that it's, do uh, it's, it's doable now and I didn't know how I was gonna make it before. Every time I get a bill, it's not just a bill. I'm a part of something, I'm getting help with something, and that's really nice. That's, to me, that's one of the best parts of the program. 
we're satisfying that environmental lobby. We're making policymakers happy. We're keeping our consumers happy. But at the same time, we're helping a vulnerable constituency and we're providing them clean, renewable energy. Who can't applaud that? You don't have to be a West Coast liberal to make that happen. You know, you can be, you can be a practical conservative out here on the western slope of Colorado and still do good things like that. Low-income residents are often not part of the conversation when it comes to energy efficiency and renewables, when it comes to resilience, and we're really working at how to try to change that. We need to solve more than one problem at a time. Low and moderate income households spend 14% or more of their income on energy, so anything we can do to reduce energy bills means that people have more money to spend on other things that are really important, like health care or education or uh, starting a new business. With solar energy, the benefits accrue a lot more locally. The labor to install uh, solar on homes and on buildings uh, in communities uh, typically comes from the immediate area, and those are great jobs with a lot of growth potential. Three, two, one. Yeah! The Solar Foundation does a census every year of the new jobs being created by the solar industry. It's one of the fastest growing industries. And again, we know that communities of color and low-income communities need these opportunities in order to be able to advance economically. And so through our economic justice agenda, we explicitly included in our campaigns around energy policies the local hire provisions and the minority and business enterprise provisions to make sure that women of color, women in general, low-income communities, communities of color, have access to the job training opportunities and to the jobs as they develop. We want to make sure that the solar economy is also one where we're participating and we can really see it as a pathway to economic justice for our communities. Crystal Ruiz. I'm from Lower East Side, Manhattan. I'm a construction fellow at Great Alternatives. So I wanted to do solar, you know, growing up. I seen the panels. I'm like, wow, like, how does energy just, I mean, the sun produce this? Like, you know, like, I was just so interested. I got the internship. I did my 12 weeks. And, you know, I went hard. And when my turn was over. Steve called me back, like, I want you. I said, I'm coming. <laughs> 